Astro Fabulous Superstars. My name is Adam Assise and I'm astrologist and founder of LilithAstrology.com. I'm so happy that Nadia invited me back to talk to you all more about my passion for the goddess energies in astrology. Um, so Lilith is one of the goddess energies, but we also have the moon, Venus, Ceres, um, Juno. These are all the divine feminine goddess energies all collectively together. And especially understanding this energy about yourself in your chart can really bring up some truths that can really get you on the path to where you want to go in your life. Understanding those energies about yourselves can help you balance the yin and the yang and that duality that is present in your life. Um, and it definitely has helped me um, harnessing my Lilith in the first house and I'm a Cancer rising so the moon rules my chart. Understanding these goddess energies has really, really made a profound um, difference in my life. So I want to share um, what these energies each mean with you in this video and I hope you enjoy. Um, don't forget, check out my YouTube channel below. I'm sure Nadia will put the links and like this video and uh, subscribe to Lilith Astrology if you like what you see. So let's get started with Miss Lilith first. Um, and that's what I've named my, um, I guess you call it astrology practice company um, movement. <laughs> that's what I, I named. I named it after her because um, that energy is in my house of my first house of self. But the essence of Lilith really goes back to the mythology. Really the the, the basic principle, I feel like, like a basic foundation of understanding astrological energies is understanding the mythology behind them. I really think that helps understand that story in a profound way can really help with your interpretation of, of the planets and asteroids and, and any personal points. Um, so the myth of Lilith is a very ancient story. It's in the Old Testament, um, in the old text. And she um, was the wife of Adam before Eve. So God made them equally out of the dust. And it's really interesting, actually, my name Adama means the dust that the first man and woman came from. So that that's really interesting. So fun fact there. They came from the Adama um, and they, you know, were put here on earth by God. And, you know, when it came time to procreate, essentially Adam was like, um, you know, you need to lie beneath to not be graphic because <laughs> we have uses of all eight. We have um, watches of all ages. So you need to be subservient to me. Um, and she didn't want to do that. She was like, we are created equal. There is no reason why I should have to submit to you. And he wouldn't accept that. God wouldn't accept that. So she said no to both of them and she left. And, you know, there has been stories about her being a demon and being demonized for this behavior, uh, particularly because of um, a lot of patriarchal beliefs um, in, in the world. Um, so, you know, my, I, I want to bring that story to light and tell a different narrative because that story to me, that is where in your chart you can experience these themes. So to kind of bring it back to yourself is where you have Lilith in your chart, you can really experience these power struggle themes um, and especially depending on, you know, gender is fluid, but depending on if you identify as man or woman, more masculine energies can experience, um, Lilith people. So those are, there are people that come in their life and test their boundaries. And if you lean on the side of more feminine energies, um, basically, um, that is you, you are like, you are experiencing it in the outside world. Um, and it's integrating your experience with the outside world is, is really key. Um, so that's Lilith. And I actually, in my practice, I only use the true Black Moon Lilith. And usually you can find that on astro.com for free. Um, I think you can click where it says mean, mean or true and always click true. And then you can find out I'm um, Lilith or book a reading with me. And I can completely help you with that. So on to our next goddess. Let's go to a lighter goddess, Venus. Um, this is another favorite of mine. I love Venus. Um, so Venus is the planet, you know, we know Venus is the ruler of Taurus and Libra. 
about, you know, play, Venus is the ruler of beauty. It's Aphrodite. It's that story. It's just, you know, love and romance um, and just all the good things in life. And, you know, when you have Venus prominent in your chart, like you have it in the first house, um, or you, you know, Libra, Libra is your rising or Taurus, you can come off charming, you can come off graceful, you can come off nice. Um, and so understanding this area of your life, actually, so the relationship side too, Libra is also about fairness and justice. Um, and and, and, Tor and um, Libra is that side of, um, of, Ven of, of Venus, while Taurus can be the more indulgent side. Um, so Venus can really also be about um, how you relate to others. Venus can be about um, fairness and what attracts you to somebody else, like what attracts you to other people, um, what, what, you know, what you find attractive and fun. It's like the dating, like flirting, fun side of, of life. So um, that is, it's, it's like, where, what, you, what do you do for fun too? That's another um, interpretation of, of, of Venus. Um, it's a beautiful planet, and Venus is also one of the personal planets. So this can come out in your personality and come can be very apparent in your everyday life, um, even more so than the sun sometimes, especially when you're young. Um, so that's such a beautiful energy. Ugh, I love Venus energy. It's so good. Um, so on to the next goddess energy, the moon. So the moon is, is actually a luminary. Um, the moon is not a planet. And... The moon rules the tides. It's the divine mother. She is just nurturing and loving. And it's just when you just think about what the moon does for planet Earth, we would not have nature if it wasn't for the moon. Like I said, the moon rules the tides. The moon rules the ocean. The moon rules a lot of things. So it's just such an important um, placement in your birth chart is such an important luminary and nurturing your moon nurturing that that you know nurturing that area of your life can just really do leaps and bounds for you um, and you know it's representative of the mother so it also can represent the type of relationship you have with your, with your mother like um, I have a Leo moon to so my mom you know she, she played music and did art and did all you know all that fun stuff so that was the type of relationship I have with my mother is like I she's just a very creative person so that doesn't mean she has to be a Leo but you know that energy is there she's actually a Scorpio which is interesting um, but if you have a cancer moon which is in his home sign your mother may have been like you know a Brady Bunch mom or just super lovey-dovey or like your usual typical mom or somebody who has a Scorpio moon may have a bit of more tense um, and more challenging relationship with their mother. Um, so the moon is the mother, and that's like, that's just such a good uh, divine uh, feminine archetype. So on to the Earth Mother series. Um, this is a beautiful energy as well. Um, so Ceres in um, Greek and Roman mythology um, was Persephone's mother. So Persephone was taken into the underworld. She was a little girl, you know, and was taken to the underworld by Hades the um, Lord of the Underworld, AKA Pluto. And so that energy was the protect, like need to protect and want to save her daughter. And so where you have um, series in your birth chart, that is how you extend that motherly protection. That is how you nurture and care for those in your life. That is how you care for others and receive care. Um, and that could be a place of abundance as well, too. That's why it's called the Earth Mother. I really, I feel like I kind of, whenever I think of a series, I get a hit of some Taurus energy, too. Um, I think that's, it's like, it's kind of like, feels like that to me. I, and it's, but it's not the indulgent side. It's really about that nurturing. And it's really interesting how the moon is also exalted in the sign of Taurus, when you think about that, too. It's just like, I'm just getting... You know, all that nurturing Earth Mother energy. It's kind of like a Taurus woman. Uh, there's always like, I feel like whenever I meet a Taurus, there's two main archetypes. There's the Earth Mother, you know, vegan, weed smoking, granola country Taurus. And then there's the glam Taurus. Um, so I just think there's those both sides. And series really is on that other side. So I think this beautiful energy and the mythology just speaks to that 
pain when, that you feel and need when you can't take care of someone and what steps you will go through to take care of them. And it's really interesting, you know? So the next goddess is Juno. Juno is the marriage partner in the birth chart. Juno can describe who you end up marrying and it may not be their sign. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's like point blank, but it may not be their sign. It can just like with, I, I you know, I get my mother as that same, similar example. Juno can describe just the energy of that person or what they could do, the profession, or where you could even meet them. Um, so it's just a really beautiful energy. And she was the wife of Zeus. So she was, you know, the, the queen. But she was known, even though Zeus, you know, ran around and did whatever he wanted, she was the loyal and devoted wife. She really held it together for their family. And Juno is that energy, it's marriage, it's devotion. And marriage sometimes is not always romance, like Venus and fun and aesthetic and, and appearance. Marriage with Juno is having to deal with, you know, a lot of issues that may come up or it may not even work out forever, which nothing ever does really, obviously. But there's always, it's, it's just a completely different side to um, partnership. Um, and so our last, but not least, and the last beautiful goddess energy is Vesta. And Vesta represents the Vestal Virgins of Rome. So they had to fan the flames in the heart of Rome to keep the city alive, to keep the hearth alive, to keep the fire alive. These Vestal Virgins, feminine energy, were keeping this, you know, sacred spot you know, it heated and alive and with fire. And it is a true testament to the power of feminine energy. You know, masculine, we associate fire with masculine, but this is, Vesta is like the divine feminine that just naturally moves ahead. It's like that receptive. I, I could even equate Vesta energy with some Cancer Rising, Libra Rising. I th it's like it's kind of similar where it's it's like I'm a cancer rising not to like toot my own horn or anything but it's similar energy where it's like you're keeping that fire alive but in a very subtle su uh, subtle and receptive way you still a cardinal but subtle receptive and um, divine feminine so that is all of the goddess energy archetypes that I love um, there are a few more that I haven't mentioned um, but I would love to give you a reading on your goddess energies. Check out the link below, visit lilithastrology.com, and I'm on Instagram and Facebook if you guys want to head over and like me there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for having me on, Nadia. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy, and I will see you sometime soon. Bye.